So I'm Sean Murphy. I'm currently ranked number eight in the world as a professional snooker player. I've been on tour since 1998. I was the second youngest ever world snooker champion back in 2005, the last ever embassy world champion. And I'm one of only 11 players ever to have won the famous Triple Crown, the World Champs, the Masters and the UK Championships. Ah, uh, geez, first got involved in snooker. I got a little snooker table for Christmas. Um, you know, I was of that age, I'd written off to Santa. I wanted one of those Commodore 64 computers. That was the dream, all my friends had one. I wrote away for one as well. Of course, it all went wrong. And uh, I don't know if my message got lost in the post or something, but Santa brought me a, a small Steve Davis snooker table instead. But you know, I was absolutely hooked. And before I knew it, uh, my dad was taking me to the local clubs. We were playing in local league matches. And then all of a sudden we found ourselves on the junior tour, touring the country, playing for England, climbing the ladder of the junior scene, the amateur scene. And at 15, having played for seven years, uh, in, in August 1998, I turned pro and um, it's gone in the blink of an eye. It's always one of those, isn't it? It's the chicken and the egg. How do you get success when you've never had it before? And I think it's one of the, you need all of those ingredients. A coach of mine once said, if you're trying to make a chocolate cake, you've got to put all the ingredients in at the correct moment at the correct intensity. If you don't, you get something that looks like a cake but actually isn't. And if you don't have the talent, the hard work, the dedication, the right attitude, the willingness to fail and come back, that determine all of those vital ingredients, if you miss one of them out, you can't make it. I think in snooker, one of the really good things in snooker that's transferable to life, business, whatever it might be, is that it's never over until it's over. Until I shake my opponent's hand and say, well done, well played, good luck in the next match. The match is still live and so many matches have been won from almost unwinnable positions. You think back to the very famous 1985 World Final when Dennis Taylor won on that famous black. People forget that he was 8-0 down in that match. He was halfway to losing the game and he hadn't won a frame. So you have to retain that unbeatable level of self-belief that if I get my chance, I'll scrape myself back up off the canvas. I'm gonna get back to the table. And I'm gonna keep pushing forward, keep trying hard, because as I say, it's not over until it's over. I think motivation is one of those strange things, isn't it? Because I don't think anyone can give you motivation. I think it's something that comes from you. And I think it's got to be linked to those goals and those dreams and aspirations that I've had since being an eight or nine year old child. Um, there are still things that I haven't achieved in snooker that I want to achieve. There are still goals I set myself um, when I very first started out on this journey of mine and I haven't quite achieved them yet. So they're what get me out of bed in the morning. That's what gets me to the club. That's what gets me on the practice table, trying to improve every single day uh, and just trying to wring out every ounce of potential uh, out of my career on the snooker table. There are still things that I want to achieve. And I think having those very clear gut cut goals um, is the difference between people who just wander through life and the people who get to the top of Everest. I think personal highlights, I mean, um, you know, the obvious ones are, are obvious, you know, the, the Triple Crown wins, the Worlds, the Masters, the UK, spanning across, you know, a good, a good length of time, almost 11 years it took me to complete that set. Um, you know, every win's special, every moment's special, uh, even some moments that don't involve trophies. Uh, last season I made a 147 at the shootout. And when we invented the shootout as a sport against the clock with the crowd, all the rest of it, none of us thought a century break was going to be possible. So to be the first player to make a 147 in that scenario, do you know something that I'll probably remember for the rest of my life? Um, I won magic moment of the season last year because of it. Um, really, I should win magic moment of the season for the next 10 seasons because of it, if we're being honest. But no, it was a magical moment. Uh, and uh, there have been so many, uh, but the wins, and of course, those three big wins, they stand above the others. 
Well, as the only person in the world who's made all three, 147, 9 Data and a hole in one, I'm the authority on it, aren't I? I'm the only one who can answer the question. And of course, obviously, it's the 147. Not just because I'm a snooker player, but it's the right answer. I always say, if you gave an absolute beginner the opportunity to do all three, which would they do first? Well, anyone can have a hole in one. Um, I think then you'd achieve the nine data second. And I think most people, you could stand there for the rest of your life. You'd never make a 147. That is by far the most difficult. Uh, it's 36 pots for a 147. And what makes the difference? Here's the difference between the nine data and the 147. Just to put the argument to bed once and for all. Nine data, the dart, the board never moves. The players always throw from the same place and the targets are always in the same place. No snooker frame has ever been the same. The balls are always in different places. There's a lot more shots. There's 36 pots to make a 147. Um, those balls are always in a different configuration. It's always a different puzzle. And you always have to get back from every red for the black. There's no different way to do it. I think there's at least two or three different routes to making a nine data. There is only one route to making a 147. The balls are always in a different position. The targets move constantly. No two frames have ever been the same. The real question is, why aren't there nine darters all the time? That board never moves. Case rests.